I've been doing a lot of animation recently in Clip Studio Paint and animation is obviously something that can be very tedious but there are a few little tips I have for you that you can use in Clip Studio Paint that will completely change the way you work and are really going to help you out. By the way, this is not a video about the basics of how to animate in Clip Studio Paint. I'm not going to go over that stuff. These are just some tips that are going to make your life a lot easier. So first of all is keyframes, which I originally didn't know about. And it's a really useful thing once you learn how to use them. So for the record, I'm not talking about planning out your keyframes in advance. I'm talking about automated keyframes that Clip Studio Paint is going to do for you. So for example, if I have this circle and all I want to do is move it across the screen, I'm doing something very basic here. I'm not trying to animate it or change the perspective. There are much easier ways to do that than to animate every single frame. Now, this is a concept you'll understand if you've done 3D animation, but it actually applies to 2D animation as well, which is quite surprising to me. So if you press this button here on the image that you want to create a keyframe for, you're going to enable keyframes. And now if you right click on the frame that you want to create a keyframe on, you simply click add keyframe. And so now you can see this little yellow diamond. That means on frame one, this layer, this circle here is going to be in this position. So we're going to move this same layer just across the screen on a different frame. And so that's going to move and it's automatically going to create our next keyframe right here. So it's going to jump from the point here on the first frame. It's in this position and then two seconds in, it's going to jump to the next position. Now you might notice that this isn't really animation per se, this is jumping from one place to another. So what you then want to do is right click on these diamonds and change it to smooth interpolation. And so when you do that for both keyframes, it's going to automatically create a smooth transition from one point to the other. So if I play it, there you go, automated animation. I didn't have to animate anything here to simply move an object across the screen. Another useful tip here is to do this with panoramic backgrounds. So if you want to easily move a pre-made background around, some of these are just the ones that have come with Clip Studio, but you can get any kind of skybox and import it. So I'm going to take that panoramic shot that's been imported and I'm going to make sure it's the keyframe so it will show up. So that's my panorama. And now I'm going to create a keyframe for it. So it's going to be right there. And then three seconds in, I'll move it all the way over here. And that will create my next keyframe. And I'll change both of these to smooth interpolation. And so now it should automatically give me a scrolling background that I haven't had to animate or anything like that. Um, it's not very smooth here. That's probably just down to it kind of rendering it as it goes. I'm sure once this is exported, it will run completely smoothly for you. And so that's another really cool way to use keyframes to kind of automate the process a bit and not have to do everything frame by frame. Number two is your onion skin settings. So you definitely want to make sure you're using onion skin where appropriate. So if you press this button here, it's going to show you the previous frame and the next frame. And that's going to make it much easier to animate your frames in relation to each other. But if you go into this animation tab at the top here, go into show animation cells, then you've got these onion skin settings. And these can be really useful if you're not too happy with what you've got by default. So you can choose how many frames before or after each shot are going to be shown. And you can change the colors of them, for example. And so you can really customize it to work in the way that you want it to. And definitely, so in this case, because the camera is changing focus and things like that, having more than a couple of frames before or after the shot isn't really doing me much good but if you had a really long animation where you've got keyframe after keyframe and then you're filling these all in it's really going to help you to show all of those frames in relation to each other so those are some settings that you definitely want to look into and customize each time to fit what you're currently trying to do number three is moving the 2d camera now this is kind of a better option in my opinion than using keyframes if you're trying to move the background around um, but it depends on specifically what you're trying to do. So I will show you what this means. So this blue square here, this is the camera that's going to be rendered out. So this is the only thing that's going to be visible when the project is exported. And you can see I've got this long image here. And so because the camera is going to move up, it's then going to give the impression that the camera's tilting and as if it's a, you know, real live action camera to some extent, we get the impression of 
moving around in a 3D space by scrolling through this big image that's been drawn in perspective. So I'm going to show you how to move your 2D camera. Um, let's just create some kind of character or something like that. So here's the first person and then the camera's going to move around to reveal this person. Um, something like that. And again, this blue square here is our camera. So how do we go about moving that? So first of all, you want to go into animation a new animation layer and then 2d camera folder now the only things that are going to be affected by this camera moving are going to be the things in this folder so you want to make sure the animation folder that you just created is going to be within the camera folder now you can put as many folders or layers within the camera folder as you want so maybe in some cases your entire timeline is all going to be within that folder and now what we're going to do it's very similar to the keyframes we're going to go into operation up here and now you see we can select this 2d camera and we can move it around so you can see down here we don't have any keyframes yet for the 2d camera so i'm going to create one by ticking this box here and that's going to put my keyframe in here now again that's not smooth interpolation so that's not going to give me a gradual scrolling effect which is really what i want so i'm going to change that and then we're going to choose our next frame. Let's give it three seconds. And we're going to move the camera wherever we want. So you can move it around like this. Or you can use something like the arrow keys. If you want to make sure it's going to just move in one direction. But I'm not going to waste too much time doing that. So here's our next frame. And you can see it's automatically put it down here. So we're going to change it to smooth interpolation. And now the camera is going to move from A to B very simply. Now there's a few other elements to this. Um, so we've got our keyframe here. Let's add another one where we're now going to make the camera smaller, which as you might expect is going to give the impression that the camera zooming in and it shows us kind of the track that it's going to take and the size difference between where it was and where it is now. So we're going to change that to smooth interpolation. And then what I might do just to show you is create a cut where the camera is not going to smoothly scroll. So what we want to do here is create a keyframe where we want it to be at this point so it's going to stay here for now and then after this frame it's going to suddenly cut back to this other character and we're going to leave both of these on i don't know what this interpolation is called the yellow one where it just cuts um so then it's just going to cut from a to b so now if i play this whole thing you can see the camera is smoothly scrolling around and we haven't had to animate anything yet it's just done automatically now you might notice this isn't really helping us in terms of seeing what the camera's seeing we're seeing it more on a how it's made level as opposed to how it's actually going to look to the audience so what you can do when you're on your 2d camera folder and you select operation you're going to have some settings down here and you can change your display mode so we're going to click on show cameras field of view and now that this camera is not going to move around so we'll zoom into this just to show you and now we're going to get a idea of how the final project is going to look when it's been exported so as you can see it's working exactly as i set it up i haven't had to do any like traditional animation i've just drawn one frame and we've got some movement just because of the camera moving around with some simple keyframes so definitely a very powerful tool that you're going to want to use next tip is something that you've been able to see this entire time you might notice that i've got this animation project here where we've got a ton of different scenes all together in this kind of box here that's helping me organize them this is a really great way to organize things when you're trying to do a big project and it's much more simple than creating one long animation where if you had to change something late in the process you'd have to move everything else that came before it but with this we've kind of got much smaller cuts of like five to ten seconds and that's going to make your life a lot easier for a longer project so to do this you tick this box right here when you're creating the animation manage file using folders and so when you do that you're going to get something like this where you've got this extra space here to manage your documents and then we can add a page and that's going to give me a whole new animation now when you do this unlike when you do a single animation you're going to have to make sure you add a new timeline and so set that up and it's also not going to give you any animation folders by default so you've got to make sure you set that up and now you're going to be able to start creating your frames of animation now here's a great tip if you're creating something a bit more advanced 
that instead of just being a basic animation, you're trying to get audio and you want the video and the audio to sync up. So importing audio into Clip Studio Paint is extremely easy. Let's say we've got some kind of character here and we're trying to sync up something they're saying to a specific audio file and we don't want to do this in post because it might not sync properly we want to do this in clip studio so it's very very simple all you need to do is get your audio files um so i've got my voice acting here that i paid for which both voice actors did great um i hope i can get this project out like finished someday and they'll be able to see it but anyway so we'll just take a random one here um let's go for confused noises and we're going to import that into clip studio by dragging it onto the canvas here um, it's not going to let you drag it onto the timeline or over here or over here. You need to drop it into the canvas. And then it's going to automatically create this new audio layer up here. That's going to just be the name of the file. So now I can play it and it's going to play that sound. And just like your keyframes and your animation, you can move this stuff around. You can cut it to cut stuff out or make it longer. And you can split clips as well by right clicking. So there's a lot of cool things you can do here to get the audio in the way you wanted it. You can also, let's change this layer and just call it that because I can't reach my keyboard properly. Um, let's then get some more audio files and we'll just grab another random one. And because we have selected this audio layer here, when I drop this in, it's going to add it to the same layer of audio. So this, you could say is this character's layer of audio. But then if I select a different layer that's not an audio layer and I want to drag in some more audio clips that are going to be played at the same time or unrelated, then if I am not on an audio layer and I drag this in, it's going to create a new one. So I can put this up here and now we've got two layers of audio to work with. That one is a lot longer but you can see we can now play them both at the same time or have one cut the other off or anything like that. So you can have as many layers as you want or to keep things organized, you can have a bunch of audio on one layer. And so that's going to make your life a lot easier while working with audio in Clip Studio Paint. An interesting tip that is good to know that if you are animating on ones or twos or threes or fours, then Clip Studio is actually going to keep track of that. So I'm going to create something on a frame here and then let's say we're animating on twos. So we're going to skip a frame and then we're going to create a new frame. So this is going to be our next frame. Now I don't need to go to frame five and click add new frame. All I need to do is stay where I am and add a new frame. And you can see it's automatically here skipped that frame and it knows I'm animating on twos now. So I can just keep doing that and I don't need to tell it which frame I want to create it's going to keep track of it and this goes both ways so if i'm starting to animate on ones or something like that so we'll do this and we'll create a new frame the next frame then all i have to do is keep pressing plus and so you can do this with any amount of frames it's going to keep track of the distance between each frame that you've created and that's going to make your life a lot easier um, you don't need to keep track of which frame you're trying to create next Another useful tool if you're trying to keep your animation organized and you're trying to do a bunch of other things, you can actually create new timelines. So we've got something going on here, um, but it's not this surface level where this is all we have to work with. We can click this button here to create a new timeline and this can be its own frame rate, its own playback time, etc. And now we've got a new timeline here and then we can create some animation in here and we can then at any time switch back to our other timelines that we've got. So that's going to make it much easier to organize everything that you've got going on and keep everything separate. So if you're trying to create something more complex that's got a lot going on with it, that's going to uh, really help you out, I think. Another thing to keep in mind is you can change your timeline settings whenever you want. So if you feel like you have the wrong frame rate or something like that, this can all be changed here. And this is a very important thing to keep in mind because if you have put in the wrong frame rates to begin with and you're playing it back to yourself slower and then you export it and everything's going really weird and fast and you haven't spread out your frames properly, something like that, you're really going to want to know that that setting is there to kind of save your project. One important quick tip that might not seem that important is that you really want to change the color of your paper, I think. 
um, you're going to be staring at this animation project for a long time most likely and it's going to burn your eyes out if you just leave it on a white piece of paper so if you double click the paper frame here it's going to give you this menu and I'm just going to color pick the gray that I had going on over here or you can choose any color you want. Somewhere in this kind of range I would recommend just to make it not too dark so you're still looking at something that's on the white side of the spectrum but not going to burn your eyes out and that's going to make it much easier to look at this project uh, for a long time. And one last tip that's relatively simple but will kind of change your life don't forget that you can change the size of the canvas. So for example, I have this space to work with here, which is pretty generous, but if I have a big background that I'm trying to scroll through, I'm going to want to be able to add more. And you don't really want the drawing that you've done going off the canvas where you can't see it. It's much easier for it to just all be here. So like with what I've done here, this was not this size originally. I didn't plan for this, but I realized I had to have quite a long space to move the camera in the way that I wanted. So this canvas is huge and the camera is only going to show this segment and then later on in the animation is going to quickly zoom across the screen right there. So to do this, you simply go into edit and then change canvas size. And it's very simple. You can just drag it in any way that you want and it will change to that size. And so you've kind of got infinite space to work with in terms of moving the camera around wherever you may want and having like huge things that are off camera that kind of thing so uh, very very simple and important to keep in mind i think so those are some quick tips that's made my life a lot easier i know there are more that i haven't covered here so let me know if you would like to hear some more but i didn't want this video to go on for too long because i wanted to actually explain this stuff so you'd be able to use it so hopefully you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it you can follow me on twitter and instagram if you want to see the art that i'm creating and if you want to improve your art for free including animation you can join the learning to draw discord server uh, so that's going to be it for this video and goodbye